I know Kung Fu. Show me. You are the new student. Come closer. You're listening to the Kung Fu Podcast presented by James Still. I don't care if it's Muhammad, Imad, Bruce Lee. And Steve Newby. This is the original Five Fingers of Death right here. But my hands are registered as lethal weapons. That means we get into a fight, I accidentally kill you. I go to jail. Right, we're, uh, we're, we're all set, we're all jacked up on coffee and sweeties <laughs> and have you got an aero, have you got your chocolate? Uh, I've just had uh, a nice big bacon breakfast. Ooh. Well, it, to be fair, yeah, it wasn't one big. O'clock. <laughs> it wasn't that big. <laughs> Those well, bacon just shrunk like, like I don't yeah. know. That's the, the one thing, uh, there's a couple of things that are amiss in England. Uh, the one thing is bacon yeah. and the other thing is history. Well, you know, yeah, but I, I mean, look on, the right, look on the bright side. You've got beautiful, big blue skies. You've got lovely, fresh mountain air, and no, you know, the population is like one third, and you've got like a landmass of uh, uh, how many times bigger is it than the UK? Well, I don't know, but the BC alone is four and a half times bigger than the UK. There you go, and it and it's got four point eleven million people in it. Jesus Christ! Oh my yeah. God! Right, listen, you're getting me dead, dead jelly. Um, I've got, I've got to go over there one at, at some point, haven't I? Yeah, anyway, oh, we've got to start. We've got to start, uh, guys. Welcome to uh, podcast sixteen um, with uh, my teacher Steve, and of course uh, me, James. Um, we are, we are the the UK's number one kung fu podcast, guys. You know, and I that's not official, mind you. But well, I think we're probably the only. <laughs> we're probably the only podcast, oh, yeah. guys. Yeah. So, but it's it, guys. The uh, the proliferation of this podcast is 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 down to you, and we'd like to thank you uh, for tuning in and uh, subscribing and all the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. we're getting a lot of uh, Lao followers now. A lot of Lao Gar. Yeah. Uh, people from various points of the the. The UK, as well as some people abroad. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And uh, I just want to say, you know, there is a, an official blog spot on in the UK. So if if you've got a question for us and we answer the question, you're always welcome to put it on the podcast. You know, absolutely. question and answer. Yeah. And then you can you can verify it then whether it's true. Or, of course, you get a load of people who disagree, but I don't mind if people disagree. What I want to know is why they disagree, because hmm. the why and how are the most important things. Yeah. So people say, oh, don't do it that way. Well, you know, as we've already said before, with the first set, 1,600,000 different ways of using those movements. Yeah. You you know, so there's got to be a why and a how. Yeah. That's all I'm asking. I'll I'll, I'll probably stick the little video answers on as well, as long as I don't mention the people's names. Yeah, yeah. Uh, And I, I suppose even if I mention names, it's... You know, as long as it's not a double name, you know, I might say, hello, Fred, this is for Fred. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it kind of, you know, might be okay with that. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Absolutely. But, um, do you know that we've got listeners across the globe? Did you know that? Yeah. yeah we got yeah. people, we got obviously Canada, USA, but South America. I mean, in the USA, we, we've got listeners from coast to coast, people in Australia, yeah, so uh, guys, we'd love to hear from you. Just uh, send us a send us a line or a message, or you know, send us a mm. you know a really groovy insult if you don't enjoy <laughs> if you don't yeah. agree. Well, with a, us. a lot of them are probably going, "What the hell is this Lugar?" <laughs> I, I, I thought that was a I thought that was a German gun. Yeah, Lugar. a Lugar <laughs> or, or, or an alcoholic beverage lager. What are you on about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what people used to look. They look at your t-shirts when you had Lugar across your t-shirt. What's that? Yeah. What's that? Is that lager? 
<laughs> you can't spell lager. You're drunk. Oh, marvelous! Oh, it's great. But no, it's. Uh, I suppose we. Are, well, we have explained already what lager is. So we, we, you know, watch all the podcast or listen to all the podcasts. Yeah, and, yeah, absolutely. But but certainly, if you're doing another martial art, it's, it's great if you send us a little video on your phone saying, you know, I do this. What the hell am I doing? Mm. Uh, you know, if you if you want, if you don't know what you're doing, your teacher's told you something that you are doing. Let's send it me, and I'll try and interpret it as if I was trying to. De decipher a code mm. oh that's that's interesting the thing is with like you know martial arts or whatever if we look at like we always talk about in the context of of lao chinese martial arts but really the physicality of any martial art has got to make some logical sense of in, course. Uh, but but it's how do you define logical sense right because uh, let's let, let's just generalize right so say you've got uh, say karate right that want to create a lot of power with the techniques mm -hmm. um, for them doing a block bringing it back or swinging it out with a great bit of power is logical sense but for yeah. us that's not necessarily the case because we're focused a, bit, a lot more on speed so but it isn't our choice or their choice it's no. science yes and this it's, is what, it's a concept know. of science now if you're looking for something that is going to be ideal for fighting if you're fighting you know big guys and whatever and you want to use lots of power then maybe you can make logical sense of that kind of thing but um you know there's there's lots there's lots of different answers in logic as well there's lo it's not just down to one you know logical way yeah. it's just got to make logical sense so you know but one person's logical answer may not be as good as another person's logical yeah. answer even though they both mo both might be this be correct yeah. so but that's fine that that's what you know this debate is all about is trying yeah. to find out you know and and what we're interested in of course is the non-logic where people are doing techniques where they have an idea of why they're doing it and then we can say well there is no logic in that answer or that uh, the way that you're doing that so perhaps if you look at it this way you can make more logical sense out of it yeah. or they could turn around and say well no i do it this way because and give us logical sense yeah. we we'll say oh you know what i never even saw that the uh, an interesting thing is like okay so if we're we're talking to our friends across the pond here well that's where you are but there's in america let, let's face it wing chun is the kung fu style right and well. when you look at well let's face it when you look at when you look at wing chun and you look at lao ga and you put them side by side you you basically you see the same techniques all right albeit done in a different order mm -hmm. you, which you do to be fair Let, let's face it so when when you say something like oh you know if you study wing chun give us a question and we'll try and answer it for you you're not being sort of uh, cocky or arrogant or anything like that what what you're basically yeah. saying is listen just your techniques are so are, are the same, and I will give you a reason for what you do. What you can't do, obviously, is is say, oh, the next move in Sulim Tao is yeah, this, yeah, yeah, and yeah. the next move in Chun Ku is this. You know, because that's impossible. But you're looking at the movements either in a prearranged uh, sequence or individual. Yeah, individual. I'm looking at I'm looking at the logic of the movements. You yeah. see, the perception of fighting, or the ideology, or the tactics and strategy, you can call it, of their uh, of a different styles fighting well strategy in effect mm. is uh, will be and can be different to mine yep. uh, but so can the guy down the street who still does Laoga. yes you know different yes. different areas will will have different ideas of doing things well, you different know. size people different yeah uh, uh, of course age people will all have different uh -huh. interpretations so we're not looking at changing anybody's perception of um, their style we're just looking at trying to change their understanding or perception of the actual technique they're doing to try to make sense of it and uh, hopefully people will then start to think in a way that as they do a move they will look at why they're doing that move mm. not because they're told to do that move but yeah. why were they told to do that move in that way absolutely but it's a two-way yeah, it's two-way traffic guys you you can make us think about what we're doing as well or you got to well, do was, a sense yeah right yeah, I was talking to another gardener this morning. Uh, another guardian, I was telling you this Another morning. gardener? Gar yeah, gardener. <laughs> May as well be. <laughs> no, you can't even get out that far. Um, uh -huh. No, I talked to another guardian. 
and um, I was just saying how what tends to happen when you when you watch or you get to know about other people's questions mm -hmm. is you obviously then get a sense of how their people are teaching them or their teachers are teaching them yeah. and so on which is which is great but you you often re come to realize that the kind of the history or the uh, lineage if you want of various different areas differs considerably and you can have some people who have managed to sustain a um, you know the ideology of, of the Lao of the movements mm. and then you have people who have gone off on a complete different tangent but it's not their fault but the problem is when they go off on a tangent in time their new instructors their students will go off in a tangent yeah. and so will then their uh, new instructors so consequently you have like not necessarily a completely different style but a completely different take on it and often they're just copying the movements without really understanding what they're for mainly because the movements they've copied haven't got a meaning they're just part of a set that they do yeah. so when as we said you know the last podcast when people do movements in a set it doesn't necessarily necessarily equate to something that can actually be done in real realistically yeah. because they don't do it realistically in a set they just perform a set so yeah. when you do a set every time you move you've got to be doing something to somebody or someone is doing something to you but whatever happens you're moving for that reason with the exception of the odd should i say exercise oh. Oh, you mentioned exercise. You mentioned exercise. You can't mention exercise on our podcast. Anyway, no, never mind. Um, go on. Sorry, where were you? Where were we? Talk um, <laughs> with the exception of certain exercises. Oh shit! I've done it again. Oh no! <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry, the, uh, there's a bit of a lag in my uh, in my uh, yeah. <laughs> God, yeah. Don't say the then, e word again. Yeah, then all the techniques should have a use. Yeah, that's what that's what I was trying to get at. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. What did I write down the other day that I was just, you know, uh, jotting down in my notes? Something like, I said, I, I was, I was just jotting down notes, you know, for no. Um, I put down something like the physicality of a technique transcends style. Techniques must have logic to him. But how do we define logic? And then, then I put martial science. And I guess what I was honestly, you know, it's, that's just a bullshit note I wrote. But I guess what I was trying to say is, you know, you've got to have a scientific principle as the basis for what you do. And it just so happens that we, we deal in, we look at speed being uh, absolute because power mm -hmm. is relative. You know? So if, yeah, so if you're a coach in uh, an athletics club and you're looking for the fastest runner, uh, sprinter yeah. and you want to make him faster what are you going to do are you just going to make up moves or are you going to try to find and define the fastest possible way you can make that person move by the position he starts from yeah by the position he accelerates from and by the position he maintains and by you know the, his breath and everything that comes with it you know nine nine seconds to run 100 meters maybe less now i guess yeah. uh, no breath don't breathe it slows you down right and uh, you know it's that kind of it's that kind of mentality you've got to yeah. have you know the the to to get the best per, best technique or the best person yeah. best athlete that's what you're looking for and for us we're looking for the best science so that that person who wherever they may be whoever they may be if they're willing and if they're prepared to practice and if they can be encouraged to become you know to sustain uh, that that art and yeah. that science because that's what we need we need a vessel mm. right to be able to put this knowledge into because we all grow old we all grow slow but the knowledge continues to accelerate absolutely yeah yeah i mean that's uh, you know i mean you know let's face it old man you're in the uh the winter of your life now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. No, but you, yeah, you know, no. I know, I know what you mean. It's. Uh, I've noticed it's been snowing a lot as well. <laughs> I was going to say that's your dandruff, but you've got no air. <laughs> oh, God.
god no but yeah. uh, honestly you know this 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 thirst for knowledge is is something we we encourage and mm -hmm. i think thirst for first of all i think you want to kind of look inward towards the style instead of looking outward you know which you think a well, lot of people yeah. do you know yeah well you only have to look at the nationals for that yeah. everybody looking at nice you know long wushu or tai chi sets in order to you know define their abilities mm. in front of people who have absolutely no idea of what they're doing and have to then judge their the merits of their technique on what they see in a moment yeah um so yes it's it's difficult uh, and and i i get it i get that they want to win the competition by trying to make us you know uh, as a flowery and flamboyant set but for me as i've said before in the podcast um make the technique work mm. and you'll win me over yeah and it doesn't matter how ugly it is make it work yeah make it look right be perfect i mean i i, I really you know when you look at a, a karate competition a tournament yeah and you see them doing their kata competition and you yeah. you see the uh the taekwondo doing their um oh. you know set Jesus. uh competitions they have to be precise because okay. there's nothing to them yeah, you know there's, there's so <laughs> there's so little to do within those forms yeah and they will argue of course that there's an awful lot oh. to do well yeah mm. yes in comparison but not in comparison to a, a, a more uh, style in a similar way to kung fu where the the wrists have meaning the fingers have meaning and so on mm. so you have an awful lot more yeah. stuff but um you know in terms of watching a competition from the point of view of you know of karate or, ta uh, or taekwondo you see that they are absolutely crisp and precise because that's what they look to do mm. they really try to tighten it up and, and that's why they're so good at um you know uh, doing competitions in unison when they do you know a, a set a form with other people all doing things at exactly the same time yeah. exactly the same height exactly the same speed mm -hmm. you know ex everything is absolute spot on and and because they can well if right you, if you've ever watched those taekwondo breaking competitions where they're all uh, oh my god it's incredible like the physicality yeah. of them it's amazing yeah you know yeah. no doubt you know so yeah. exactly yeah i know what you mean yeah i was um talking about sort of you know watching other people uh and yourselves i suppose doing doing forms sets counter patterns whatever you want to say i remember i was um i was I was spying on a class once. Uh, it was um, oh, it was um, what was it? Taekwondo class. And I was sat next to the guy, at, um, one of the parents of uh, the people doing the class, and we just got chatting, you know. And he turns around because we were watching them do their their patterns, and he said, um, he said, you know what? He said, you know, when you see when you see them because we were mentioning you know patterns you know I, I think I said that but he said you know when you see people sparring it looks nothing like the patterns and I just I, I just think yeah you're right mate and then just put my head down because I thought I'm not even going there with you dude you know <laughs> but do you know what I mean like it was like and I, you know bless him but that's I don't blame him for lack of knowledge because you know let's face it you know yeah. bless him but it was an in, I just thought that's an interesting point from someone looking on the outside but even mm -hmm. i would wager the bet that you know a correlation between movement made during that what i saw in that class and fighting would be you know seldom if ever done you know but you've got to at least be capable of fighting with the techniques you're training right they've got to look there they've got to be there and, and therefore that's why i say to you when you practice a set enough you should do it as if you were fighting yeah um, and and then of course we always come back to this argument oh yeah but which style is the best and then people go to oh you know boxing is better or UFC is better or whatever mm -hmm. it don't, totally depends on what you're training for yeah absolutely if you're training for a professional competition fight or a professional ring fight yeah uh, then you're going to be you know qualified to do that if you don't you won't be qualified yeah if you're not training for that 
then don't participate in a bloody ring fight yeah. because you won't win. The yeah. reason you won't win is because you haven't trained for it. Okay, you're training basically because you want to be able to defend yourself. Now, when you have to defend yourself, it's against a sudden attack, it's against a bigger person, it's against a smaller person, it's against an armed person, mm -hmm. and, and you are training for every event. You're not, you know, specializing your attack uh, or your defense in any particular way because there are no rules. Mm -hmm. So you've got an awful lot more to think about and an awful lot more to practice, but the people who will attack you are not going to be skilled in that sense because if yeah. they were skilled and disciplined they wouldn't be attacking you in the first place yeah yeah so it's very few you know good martial artists would ever consider being a complete lunatic and picking on someone the person sitting in the bar he's sitting in the corner of the room quiet as a mouse reading his paper you pick on him you don't know what capability he's got yeah Right, but the person who stands up and starts pushing people around and bullying people, you very quickly learn what he's got and what he hasn't got. Yeah, and 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 it's really uh, funny to see the person who's standing bullying everyone goes over to the person reading his newspaper, and the person who doesn't want any trouble reading his newspaper will annihilate and completely destroy that individual. A, because he didn't know he could, right? That's the, mm -hmm. the bully, didn't know he, he, he could. And he wants to make it quick. He wants to make it as fast as he possibly can because he doesn't want to fight. But he may well have done an awful lot in his life that doesn't require him to get up and prove it. Yeah. Right? I think once you've got experience, you don't need to get up and prove it. No, no. And I think a lot of people in, you know, these people are talking about self-defense oh yeah but what if he was this massive you know big guy with loads and loads of experience well if he was that he should be ashamed of himself if he's picking on people especially if he's big because the majority of people are going to be smaller than him yeah so you yeah. know then he deserves a hammer on his head <laughs> then he deserves a glass in his face yeah because that's what you'll get if he's picking on people who are scared of him yeah Oh, I've, it's a I've, danger. I freaking hate bullies. I always yeah. have. Um, going back to, I just want to just briefly touch on sort of the mentality of 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 um, training. Okay, in different aspects. Now, just before you mentioned like um, boxing, right? For example, um, uh -huh. you look at sort of uh, boxing, right? You you know you and. Basically, I remember I got approached by a guy a couple of years ago by a friend of mine. I said, listen, and he said, my, my, my friend is going to take part in one of these white collar boxing uh, tournaments and he's got no one to train him. And uh, anyway, my name was, you know, frittered to this guy. And I said, yeah, sure, I'd love to oblige. I'd love to help out, you know, just need some room, just some space and all the rest of it. Anyway, met, met this guy and, you know, he's my friend to this day, he's a lovely guy. And uh, we began training. And the, the problem I quickly encountered was that this guy thought that I was teaching him Kung Fu because he said, have you ever done boxing? I said, no. I said, I've just done Kung Fu. So right away, he had this impression of, I didn't know how to teach boxing. Now, for me, fighting is fighting. Like that is, you know, there's only so, if you eliminate the legs and you put forward a, 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 a uh, parameters of a fight with rules you know there's only so many yeah. so many ways you can throw a punch so many ways you can use a ring you know use your movement within that ring to achieve your objective which is to win yeah, yeah. <laughs> right yeah. so it was like he was quite sort of perplexed that i would have the audacity to to to, to suggest that i could teach him boxing and i thought it was really interesting because after he got to know me a couple of times, you know, uh, obviously he must have thought what I was saying was making sense. And anyway, we had a bit of a issue with him going on YouTube and watching Manny Pacquiao's trainer and all the rest of it, and then doing different things to what I was telling him to do. Anyway, we, we ended up wasting a little bit of time, but when it came to the fight, he uh, he, 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 drew, he drew, you know, um, but I put him ahead by one point and that wasn't being biased. It was just crap, crap uh, referees. 
but um, my point was this it was like it's funny how people assume that when you you know if you were to foray into the realm of boxing or you know whatever that because you do because I do you know Lao Ga Kung Fu that I, I have no business doing it and I'm like not at all mm. not at all I understand boxing probably better than mm. boxing you know and I mm. and I don't mean that in a cocky way but because I'm no, aware, I understand I'm aware if you you know when you add the legs into it you know and not only that hey if you want to do San Shao you start grabbing legs and you know throwing them yeah. you know, do you see what I mean the, the scope yeah. of it right. increases if you if you decide to do a sport then yeah. you chip away the you know exactly. the art yeah and you maintain a part of the art which is useful to you yeah. but a lot of it will not be useful to you in that particular no. environment but that's exactly the same as if you go into a street and you walk into a bar you will use totally different tactics in that bar than you would use if you're still outside in the car park yeah. because yeah. it would call for a certain strategy yes you know you would use you know objects and objectives in a bar you know especially if you're fighting a much bigger person or whatever where you can keep him away from you by moving around a table yeah. same apply that that applies i guess by moving around a car but at the same time there are many other aspects you can use in yeah. a bar that is different to what would be in the car park and it includes light and dark mm. it includes you know where the lights coming from it includes the objects that are available to you it includes the space that you're available it it, it also obviously outside of the bar on a, on a car park would include the level of the ground mm. and the makeup of the ground is the ground slippy is it grass is it gravel there's all these different things that you can go to yeah. to increase your chances of survival and 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 people don't get that you know because the gravel you can pick up and throw in his face for starters yeah. uh, you know there, there's many things you can even kick a puddle <laughs> yeah. well you'd listen, be surprised just, what you can just do. watch a jackie jan film you know there's an example oh, well, you of use go, in your yeah. environment you know yeah but exactly uh, no I, yeah. I i just think it's funny when like i think the one thing that lao gar and you know certainly you have always instilled in me is is you know if you're going to foray into certain you know uh, competitive fighting types just know what you're doing you know whether it's boxing yeah. semi-contact full, full contact whatever because yeah, you man. can't train in in a way that you would you know train normally if you like you have to like you said no. chip away a few techniques here and there in compliance with the rule set and i remember well, watching yeah there is a is a point for you remember that uh, you, you know you, you've had a few ex-students who now uh, sort of train hungar and uh, mm. their their organization in hong kong you know i remember watching one of their dinners on youtube basically you know this guy's daughter was going to do an mma fight and the head of this uh, hungar style in hong kong gets up in front of everybody all his students and says proudly announces my daughter's going to do an mma fight we're really behind her but what we're going to do is we're going to send her off to a muay thai gym gym to learn how to kick and punch i'm like hang on you you're you're a bloody master of hungar and you're sending her to, to, to a Muay Thai gym to learn how to kick and punch. What's, what the hell's going on? Do, do you know what I mean? Like, does that make yeah. any sense to you? Yeah, yeah. Well, even if you look at a boxer and from fight to fight, he'll change his tactics too. Yeah. So he has to train a, a few tactics, but he doesn't have to train a huge amount of tactics. He just has to have a good strategy, but yeah. he has to change that strategy and tactics for every fight he does because he's fighting different people who may have different you know option i mean look at ufc uh, the, you know you go okay i've got to fight this guy who is a grappler i better start thinking about what he's going to do to me if he if he favors grappling and i end up stuck on the floor and i'm a kicker and puncher so what i've got to do is uh, you know work away around that and then vice versa of course yeah. so you know everybody has to change their strategy and you have to if you're going to fight you've got to train specifically for it if you're going to fight with a fighter then you've got to train an awful lot harder so you know it isn't about who's best or what style is best it's about who trains specifically for what yeah. they're going to do right yeah you know exactly, yeah. don't don't try to enter a ring if just because you think your style's good if you enter a ring you must enter the ring knowing you can you know succeed but if you don't train there's no way you can succeed yeah so 
yeah no absolutely you know but he, he, yeah it's just the interpretation of what we do it's it's uh, it's mad you know but mm -hmm. uh, um listen i want to talk about that was quite interesting i enjoyed that I, I want oh we've about... some philosophy there right eh? some philosophy <laughs> <laughs> master poe <laughs> right i want to talk about the fighting stance okay and we'll just you know fighting stances generally all right not not necessarily the fighting stance in lao however there are some points i want to just touch on with the fighting stance uh, when i see other other people do it and whatnot i just want to get your opinion on it but fighting stances what are they about why do we have them that's your you've cue to, by the way <laughs> yeah I was, I was gonna say you've got to have a basis to start from you go have a base to fight from you know you've got to have a position of, of you know start yeah and uh, and an objective to defend uh, so you know if, if it isn't a strong position to defend and it's not a, a, a strong position to attack from then you're going to find yourself overwhelmed mm. or underwhelmed if you're attacking mm. you know because you'll be underwhelming to them mm. so uh, you know that's why we have a fighting stance but you know that's the fighting position during a fight but before a fight if you portray a fighting position you know to a person who may not even appear uh, prepared to fight you just arguing with you or being angry and you then apply a fighting position or, or you know drop into a pose a fighting position straight away you're you're you know making the worst situation you're, um, you're showing what's it your called? intentions. Ra well, you're raising the raising the stakes a little bit, aren't you? Mm, yeah. yeah, showing your intentions, and then he's what is he going to do? He's going to go, oh, you want to fight? Do you okay? And of course, you don't know what he's like. You don't know how good he is. You don't know what are you doing? Yeah. So you know the fighting stance should only be done. I mean, uh, the actual fighting stance is if we're literally. Um, in a fight so the person actually goes to grab you goes to punch you goes to whatever i mean obviously the position you're standing in in the first place should be in a ideal situation not too close mm, yeah. um you know a good arm's length and more away giving you time to think giving you time to respond yeah. but but most importantly of course the fighting stance is is devised is develops into like your defense and attack situation yeah. uh as he as he goes for you 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 know straight away your first hand out there is your defense the second hand is the counter the first hand who defends can lock can throw can point mm. poke can uh, literally attack counter attack you know or preempted strike if you want to call it that mm. um you know in other words you're striking him before he even gets to hit you because he may just try to grab you uh so on there's all sorts of things you can do from a fighting position uh, if we're talking about the basic fighting stance and that stance is just purely to as a response to an attack not right. preempting an attack yeah right yeah so so let me ask you a question then uh, again hmm. devil's advocate why are there so many different versions of fighting stances what's that about for well, example people in, in boxing you know you've got your hands generally up in in uh, you know other styles you, you know presented out well and or, or yeah in a boxing match you're already in a fight well, and you know exactly where he's yeah. going to try and hit you yeah. so you're going to put your hands accordingly and you're going to put your your, your stance accordingly yeah. because you can't use your legs you're going to have to use your stance to move so you know shuffles and you know invariably shuffles rather than steps yeah. you know it's, it's not a good idea to step it takes too long and you're crossing over yourself you're going too far forward and that you shouldn't be that far away from the target in the first place and um, yeah, obviously, get your arms up. You've got big gloves on. You're going to protect your, your head, yep. and your elbows are in to protect your ribs, and so on. And you're tucked underneath. You're tucked down, so your head is actually closer yeah. because you're tucked down. And if you roll your hips forward, then you can sort of alleviate that a little bit. But what you're trying to do is to cover as much as your body as you can with your with your with your arms so, and your elbows. And so, so is, on. is there such a thing as a perfect fighting stance then? No, I, I wouldn't say so. Um, I mean, if you are going, if you, if once you're in a fight, you're going to a fight and stance. If you put yourself with your your hands obviously in front of you, with a up, up low, out, you know, out like a Thai boxer, in like a boxer, you know, sort of half and half with 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 a martial arts person, you're going to find that those hands have got to move, mm. and 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 often you'll find, and and I call it an attitude hand. Often you'll find that people will have their one hand out 
you know, sort of covering themselves. And the hand that is lower and further back tends to be forgotten, uh, especially when they're, you know, training in, you know, a club. Uh, the bottom hand tends to be forgotten. Well, that's what the target hand is. The, the, the obviously your adversary can know, he can judge whether you're thinking about what you're doing with each hand. If the one hand is lively, he's going to be wary of it. If the other hand is, is kind of forgotten and the wrist is bent and the fingers are all curled up and you're completely forgotten about it, that's his target. Yeah. yeah. That's where he's going to kick that if he can because it's going to hurt you because you ain't going to move it because you weren't even aware of it yourself. Do you, do you know the best best thing I ever that you said, I, I, I quote it all the time, is you only know you're covered when you know you're open. Yeah, that's a lovely. I love that saying. I was just going to say it then, but I thought <laughs> I knew you would come out with that. Oh, you know it. You know it. Yeah. But explain that. What does that mean? What's the, the, the well? You're only that? covered when you know you're open. Just simply means that exactly that. You 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 know you're open, so you protect that area, and once you protect it, you're covered. So, but you're you open know. somewhere else, though. That's right. That's why you have to keep moving your body. That's why you have to keep moving your arms. <laughs> If you don't move, the other person knows you're open in yeah. one place or another. But you can you can never be completely covered. Yes. Especially yes. if you're taking your hands out, as we do. Yeah. I mean, even a boxer's not completely covered. No. Uh, he is in a boxing match to, not as in, much not as he can. Kicking. Exactly. Not in a real situation, he's not. So a boxer might put his hands up as he would in a boxing ring and be able to reach a beautiful jab, nice and long. But if you're same height as him your legs going to be longer mm. and the target's going to be closer because it's going to be his knee so i mean i've watched boxers professional boxers you know take on just the same as one of those stupid kind of contests where one kind of martial art or one kind of fighter takes on another fighter and he and this boxer believing him to be a professional boxer quite a well-known name actually i can't remember it i'm sorry but he he, he stands up to this guy who does some karate uh, some like full contact mm. and, and guess what happens he's just getting kicked in the leg every five seconds yeah. and, and eventually he, jump, he sits on the ropes and says I'm not doing this mm. he just refused to get out, out again yeah. Yeah. because he just could not defend his legs at all now he might be the great puncher he might be, if he hit you he'd probably kill you but the problem he's got is he's got to get there first yeah. and the other guy because he's a kickboxer he's trained same kind of stamina or i mean even less stamina he's still got the capability of, of fighting he's certainly got the willpower no one's going to stand against a professional boxer if they haven't got the will to do it mm, yeah, you know and the, the capability so yeah. he stood there he just kept kicking his leg and the, you could watch his leg collapse every time and he kept on pulling it back and rubbing it because yeah. he kept getting kicked and are hurt it was thinking, hurting. are you not thinking of that muhammad ali when he fought that wrestler guy that that japanese wrestler no, it wasn't. No. Really. Have you ever Ali. seen that? Have you ever seen that? When no. Ali, I th it's one of them uh, exhibition fights, you know, taking yeah. the piss sort of thing, but it was the funniest yeah. thing I've ever seen, you know. Ali yeah. dancing around, and this guy just kept, basically, this guy just thought, I can't get close to Ali, so I'll just lie on the floor and let him come to me. <laughs> it was the most <laughs> ridiculous, it was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. It's, oh, it's funny if you find it. Um, talking about the, so, you know, the fighting stance is, 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 We've we've discussed that that a fighting stance generally will apply once you're in the fight. Fluidity. Right? Fluidity, yeah. yeah. But um I just want to talk a bit about why we have the fighting stance we do in Lao and what's the reasons for it. For example, it's very much, you know, you're covering the center, one hand is uh, is slightly forward than the other, but you you know, you're not trapping your That's hand right. so to yeah. speak and you know Well um, yeah go on. Yep. Pete, I was gonna say, well people will say, um obviously even with a kung fu fighting stance you do low kicks so consequently you're going to be open well of course you are and that's why you keep moving because you don't want him to set you up you don't want him to s that's why in a competition fight once you're in the fight they're dancing the reason they're dancing is because they don't want you to know they're going to suddenly move mm -hmm. so that sudden move is amongst a multitude of other moves so you can so it's disguised right mm -hmm. what they've got to try and do is close that gap without you noticing they're closing that gap and that could be fighting that can be moving their legs slowly forwards as they're bouncing without you realizing it because they're trying to you know draw your attention to their arms which you keep moving mm -hmm. you know so that in a fighting stance that's how 
people will apply and protect themselves yeah. from a sudden attack. In the terms of, of real or, or traditional fighting, if you like, yes, you can be kicked to the leg. So you've got to make sure that you're prepared to lift that leg. So you've got to have the right posture in, in to have the right center of balance so that you've got the right amount of weight on each leg so you can move that leg. Yeah. Someone tries to kick your leg, you move the leg, you lift the leg, you can actually attack with the leg. Someone does a turning kick, you throw your knee sideways into that leg as it's coming around. So your knee will protect you and attack at the same time. Yeah. And they do that with, I guess, tie boxing, maybe kickboxing, they do that. But that's basically the same principle. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as the arms are concerned, no, you can't protect your shins with your arms. And then, of course, you can get kicked to the groin. Well, part of the position, if you rotate your hips forward so that you're in a straight posture, someone does try to kick you to the groin, at least through the groin. You know we've done this in demonstrations and yeah. so on. You know, someone kicks you to the groin, you roll your hips, your, your ass is lower than your scrotum. Yeah. So you get your ass you know, yeah. kicked, yeah. but it doesn't hurt yeah. Yeah. and yeah. it doesn't take you down. Yeah. So that that is one way, the posture itself is one way to ensure, you know, afford a little bit more protection. It's not gonna give you total protection. It's only gonna give you protection against things that you can see coming. Yeah. If you know he's trying to kick you in the groin and you can move over that leg without even blocking it and you can protect it because you have a skill in that way, by rotating your hips, etc., etc., having a good posture, you yeah. can, all you have to do then is twist, and you've broken his leg. Yeah, yeah. Because you're going to dislocate his knee. That's all you've got to do is turn to the left, turn to the right, you, and you haven't even got to throw a punch. I, you've dislocated his knee. So it's 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 the it's the skills you learn in in learning to fight. Yeah, I loved it when when we were doing sticking hands, and you watched the video of, of me doing like low kicks to you, and your legs are just one minute they're there, the next minute they're not. <laughs> Because <laughs> you just you 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 go into cross steps and stuff like that, and where was a target now is no more, and it's just yeah, like, oh, you well, can't, well, you know, and it's yeah. fantastic. You got to yeah, you got to feel what's happening, yeah, haven't yeah, you? Yeah. And then of course people do high kicks, and you just put your elbow in the way. Yeah. They don't want to do a high kick again because no. an elbow on a shin is pretty painful. Yeah, and absolutely. of course you want to keep your elbows in when you're doing sticky hands, um, and someone's trying to kick. Uh, and of course you can do that when they're punching low as well you drop your elbow onto their their forearm yeah. and uh, you know they it kind that's of slows them. remember they're faster than you and you you've got to slow them down yeah and yeah and that's how you do it um just i i we can't i, I would expand on what you just said then but i'm not i'm just going to draw it back to the fighting stance um uh -huh. explain to me um, the position of the thumb in Lao Ga, like we, we, we have always, there's a saying, isn't there? Lao Ga, you tuck your thumb in, Tai Chi, it's uh, kind of the thumb is out. Do you, do you, do you, do you, do you have you heard that before? Um, well, probably, I don't know. Yeah. But the, yeah. the, the, the difference, I think, I think the difference is experience because you'll find a lot of people have their hands mm. relaxed, their arms will be out. Now, the, there's an important, now, of course, when you're taught, when you're training at the first time, you will be taught to have your hand like a willow leaf straight and the thumb is up against it sidewards yeah yeah so and it's firm and yes. you you look like a you know a mannequin with your fingers sticking dead straight yeah, yeah. well of course that's to discipline you to remember that where your hands are yeah. okay and often you'll find that their little finger will sl start to uh, sort of separate from the other fingers yeah. because they're not used to they've got no strength in the little finger they don't use it for anything so it tends to be forgotten yeah uh, so particularly again uh, when you're using the sword as an example that left hand is <laughs> sorry i cut because i cut my finger the other day yeah go on yeah <laughs> using that sword is extremely important the left hand is extremely important yeah. so what you do when people are training the sword and they can't keep their little finger or their thumb right mm -hmm then you put a piece of elastic band around it or tape their hand up yeah. and then they they can't make the mistake and they remember it all the time yeah. so you do that the same with a beginner who can't keep his hands correct oh, then sure. you put a piece of elastic band around his fingers and and that's it so we will always try to remember that yeah. but as they get more experienced you will see that their thumbs will start to relax simply because they they're ready to make a fist yeah. and the thumb is is far more prepared when it's out there than if your hand was stiff because remember if you've got anything if your legs are stiff your arms are stiff your hands are stiff you first have to release them you have to release energy before you can use energy yeah 
Sure. You know, and that, and that and that's the problem with people with going back to number one hand block, for instance. Yeah. Yeah. People do number one hand block and they stand there with their hands by their waist, waiting for the purse to come in a dead straight stance with their mm. feet shoulder width apart. So much waiting tension. for that punch. Yeah. Yeah. And then what do they do? Because they're straight, first either they have to lean forward in order to take their leg back, or they have to bend their knees in order to take their leg back, yeah. or they try to fall back up with their head and expose their groin yeah. as they try to step back. So the three different things. What you really need to be doing, of course, is in a completely relaxed state. And yeah. that's with your legs just being relaxed. So you can kick off your yeah. left heel you, and push your leg back. Your right leg back. Yeah. Oh, for real. For real. The, I, I, this is one for the instructors out there as well. If you, you know, mm -hmm. uh, when you're calling the walks in your class, or you know basic walk punch whatever kicks whatever mm. just every so often have a look and and just look at everybody's hand position and see what their fingers are doing and where their hands are in relation if they're performing a fighting stance because you see so many people and i know because it happens with my guys i'm constantly reminding them you mm -hmm. see these fingers slowly creep down and because people are so concentrate they're concentrating so much on either the next kick that they're going to do in the walk in the mm -hmm. line work for example or mm -hmm. the next punch they're going to do or what they're going to do they suddenly forget that they've got these these fingers out and they start curling mm -hmm. in and clawing in and that tells mm -hmm. me as an instructor i'm watching them it tells me you have no sense of your physicality uh, yeah. to do with your, your your hands because remember you should be focused on what's happening with your whole body yeah um, be very well of that you know when i when i teach uh you know kicks uh Lin -Wan -Tak -Fah, the, the the walking kicks if you like i try to limit them to three if i can and then turn because yeah. the turn is more important yeah. Um, or we turn to the right, or we turn to the left, and yeah, do nine, it. whatever. Turns. Yeah, they're, they're yeah you can have a much smaller room that way. Yeah, There's not so yeah. many people in a class now, so a smaller room is good. Yeah. So yeah, and the same with the walks. Turn them to 90 degree angles. Turn them completely round, 180 degrees. But when they're training their legs, their emphasis is on their hands. Yes. And they can forget their legs. Yes. Absolutely. They just throw out the leg, and then when they're training their hands, the emphasis is on their stance, their yeah. feet. Yeah. their legs yeah. and that's that's really important and when they've got mirrors often you know you get a hall with mirrors mm -hmm. as they're walking towards the mirrors they're concentrating on one thing yeah. turn think about it without the mirrors turn now concentrate on the other thing yeah. and there's they'll see the difference yeah. and then when they turn they'll have the whole thing thing put together yeah. so it, it, it's a it, yeah it's great having mirrors, mirrors are well, it's, it's really good you know um mm -hmm. absolutely great having mirrors i mean all also you can sort of train opposite people and, and watch them as well and and, and you can teach from the back and still see the front yeah 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 because often people who need help are usually at the back because they've got no confidence oh they're always at the back aren't they that's yeah. why i do i get everyone lined up and then i switch the direction <laughs> <laughs> uh, no but yeah. but seriously though if you're everybody out there you know beginners and whatnot just look at the the state of your fingers when you're doing a fighting stance you know just just be aware be aware it's it's one of these elements just to be aware of um yeah so yeah i just thought I'd mention cut that. your nails yeah that's it that's it that's cut it cut your nails cut what? your toenails wear bare feet <laughs> no don't wear bare feet you gotta, yeah no wear your communist footwear play you shoes i love them i tell you as, as communist footwear goes it's the best communist footwear <laughs> now if you're gonna get fey yous, because they make the, you know the fake you know what I'm talking about, Steve. Feiyu trainers. Yeah, yeah, They're, yeah. They're uh, yeah. the ones endorsed by the Shaolin monks. You know the people with no <laughs> possessions. You know. <laughs> <laughs> make you know, money when, off the shoes that's it when they're not they, when they're not making money off the shoes they'll you know advertise laptops and stuff but yeah as if you can get like they actually licensed for production for you shoes in in america uh, uh -huh. and obviously they make them in china and europe and america get the american ones and i think i'm not sure is it like a is it a circuit a red circle on the sole or something or i can't remember what it is but you have to do well that ain't gonna last long no, is no, it no but the american made ones are better than the chinese made ones the sole seems oh, to right. last longer i i find anyway yeah. but uh yeah communist footwear 
Well, we, we were talking about those yes the the other day, weren't we? About the uh, yeah, the, the you know, pad, podcast yeah. fifteen about the where you end up with the underwear following uh, you, yes, because it's compressed underwear. <laughs> yeah, I told you I got a pair of them, didn't I? I went to Communist China when I was sixteen. Yes, because nineteen seventy four. Because we just yeah. heard it on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I didn't. I forgot to tell you actually. Uh, um. Which can bloody escape me now, oh, yeah. but you know as well as buying those shoes. What else did you I got do? Got an air rifle. Um, yeah, no. Uh, your Bruce Lee no. T-shirt. Um. <laughs> no, it, it was is... something about shoes, and I've completely forgotten now. Oh. God damn. But this is how you know you're you're not making things up when you start repeating yourself, Mister yeah. Newbie. <laughs> oh, they know that it's yeah, they know it's not not what's it called, <laughs> rehearsed. <laughs> What's what's that dirty word again? Rehearsed. Rehearsal. Yeah. If if I if I remember, I'll come back to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but go on. Right, I want to talk about because we kind of we talked, we finished the last podcast, and we did our series on talking about all the the empty hand sets, you know, pretty much leading up to Black Sash. What I want to do is is I want to just uh, um, talk about the knife defense because yeah. I want to kind of go and uh, again, it's going to be a, a generalized talk in general about knife defense and, and and what we're doing what we're trying to achieve as opposed to individual techniques of course we ha we have to have a we have to start from a sort of a, a base and generally in Lao we have the knife defense a series of uh, scenarios six scenarios that we that we'll do but i think in general let's try and keep it you know as a as a as a generalization of techniques rather than the yeah. individuals uh, go for it mr newbie what do you want to say well, <laughs> yes, you, you've already said, haven't you, that there are six yeah. scenarios, yeah. and these scenarios will differ because they have a completely different um, uh, approach because there are different weaponry being used there or a choice of weaponry being used. You know, the hacking down mm. can be, you know, it traditionally it would be like a, a Chinese knife, like a cooking knife, you know, like a big yeah, like a cleaver. Uh, hatchet, hatchet. Yeah. like a cleaver that's that's yeah. the word yeah. yeah but but i want to i want to really generalize about doing knife defense as as a uh, as a practice anyway because the majority of videos and youtube things you see out there are people dissing it they're saying you can't defend yourself against a knife and invariably they're right to a point that is to say that just like you can't go into a ufc ring without training you can't go into a knife fight without training mm. so you've got to have a certain mentality but you may not have time in that situation to be able to uh you know see anything coming so it's a it is about the training and and for that reason you've got to rehearse that and that's mm. what training is to constant rehearsal 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 yeah. luckily for you nowadays you use a rubber knife mostly uh, earlier before rubber knives became popular they were wooden knives and you still got hurt with them mm. and before that we used real knives and in my grading three of us took the grading one of them got cut his cut his hand open yeah. as, as he tried to block upwards and he failed his grading because he had his hand cut open yeah. um in a grading uh sorry in a course 60 people took part in the course three people went to hospital because knife defense because they were real knives and you had three people facing you one of them had a knife but you didn't know which one yeah good luck yeah right, right? that was the training now you know that some of them got really nasty gouges in their hands yeah uh, but but these are people trying to be careful with those knives yeah right, right? never mind someone actually trying to stab you so if you are going to jump go on the, the 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 journey shall we say and it is a long journey of training to fend against a knife you've got to be serious about it and in a, in addition to the knife you've got to recognize there are certain things that will assist you not just technique but you know common sense like 
you know, try to, you know, wrap something around your arm if you're trying to, you know, fend off a knife. Try Thick, thickness of your clothing or whatever. Yeah, thickness of your clothing makes a difference. The position you're in, the weaponry you can pick up, yeah. the the light that you can pick up. If you've got a torch, it can help. Yeah. You know, there's all sorts of things, and that they can use as weaponry. The the longer and bigger, the better. But yeah. you know, that that's one way of looking at it. Then, before I even go on about the syllabus. The, the other thing that I've always agreed on, and we always have this argument with students when we do a knife defense course, because I always say, unless you're willing to practice these things, they're not gonna work. Nothing's gonna work if you don't practice it, as you know. Yeah. Yeah. But with knife defense, even more so, right? Because it ain't gonna be a rubber knife. Yeah. It's gonna be a real knife. And it might be quite a long knife, but it might be a little knife, and it might be a knife you've never even seen. So you're, you're Attitude has got to be right, but this this one thing they always argue with people. I say, okay, where's the best place for you to be if you're confronted with a knife? And they go, well, I, you know, they ain't got a clue. Obviously, the best place if you can run is to run, of course, mm -hmm. to get out of the way. But if you can't go anywhere and you're cornered and there's one person with a knife, only one, remember, for this particular scenario, and I'm going to suggest that you just drop to the floor, lie on the floor. So we've now, got the whole of our audience going, you freaking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so go on, and so, go on, old man noobs, make the case. <laughs> so now <laughs> I have to justify my actions. Yeah. So you're a woman. You're confronted by a man threatening you with a knife. You have nowhere to run. What are you going to do? You're going to give up on him. Okay, fine. You can give him whatever you, 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 you've got to give him. Uh, you may not want to do that. Uh, but before that option arises, you get on the floor. When you're on the floor, what's the most protected part of your body? That's your feet. What's the, how oh. the hell is he going to get down there unless he dives on you? Or th People will say, oh, you'll throw the knife at you. Well, if he throws the knife, and it, it's, that's one stab right? And he hasn't got the knife anymore. Mm. So that's a better chance than standing there and getting multiple stab wounds, yeah. right? Next, you're on the floor. You, you've got your arms to maneuver yourself around. You move around, keep yourself up, screaming and shouting as loud as you can, shouting fire, fire, don't shout rape because no one will come. And, uh, and if you shout and kick out at his legs with the only thing that's protected, that is your shoes, protecting your feet at his lower legs at his knees he's not going to get any closer than that but he's going to get injured right so your objective is to take the attack to him and that is to lie on the floor rotate round using your arms and your legs and using one leg each leg in turn to kick out at his legs if he's that close if he's not that close he ain't going to stab you so that's the only way you are going to have a chance of survival yeah. by fighting back. That's right? a very interesting hypothesis. Huh? Yeah. It's but yeah. but it's you know when you think about yes the most protected part of your body would be a shoe because yeah. what the most people um, like like you know if you're cutting meat to the butchers you're going to wear a chainmail glove you know yeah. but and you haven't got that protection on your hands you no. know but your you, your foot solid you know if you're wearing boots or whatever yeah. Imagine if yeah. you're wearing well, stiletto trainers, heels. Whatever. Imagine if exactly. you're wearing stiletto heels. You know, well, you may just... break the heel, but the, the, the most important thing is that you are, yeah, kicking it, break it on them, yeah, kicking the shins, kicking at the lower, just below the knee, mm. kicking at the knee, kicking at the side of the knee, you know, stamping out as hard as you can, as fast as you can, and screaming as loud as you can. Yeah. And I tell you what, you'll scare the crap out of him, right? Because it is so unusual for him to see that, and, and the only way you've got to go. And that's the only way I would suggest to people who cannot do a knife defense for their life to, to, to do. Alternatively, if you've got the opportunity to pick up a chair, if you've got the opportunity to pick up a big stick or pull out your gun, mm. then that's fine. It's um, when, you, when you, I mean, I remember uh, training that in the class with you when, when we were yeah. doing a knife defense course weren't we uh, yeah. and it's it's a really interesting dynamic people all right mm -hmm. you, you know one of you has a knife the other person's on the floor and that that person with the rubber knife you know just play the play it as a game whatever 
you know, has to try and stab you. And how many times is he going to scab you before you kick him in the leg, kick him in the kneecap, or you could even take down with the legs, etc. You know, well, then it becomes a floor fight. So I'm I'm not going to do that. I'm going to. The options there, though. Yeah, but if you do a floor fight, he's still got the knife. That, yeah, you know. but then you can get up while he's on the floor or falling down and run. <laughs> yeah, they, they, there's the point. Yes, you get up and run. Yeah. Yes, if you can get him down, that's fine. But as long as he can't sort of crawl towards you, because yeah. once he's down on your level, yeah. you've no longer got the protection you had in the first place. Yeah. The only way he can actually get you is to get down on your level. Yeah. So by, by pushing him down you're uh, encouraging him to get down on your level so uh, what i'm suggesting is that you kick his shins kick his shins kick his shins keep him away from you right and by hopefully it's the screams and the shouts that are going to be more you know uh more problematic for him than actually the kicks because he's going to think someone's going to come any minute so he's going to go and pick on someone a bit easier yeah but it's like that's that's, that's, yeah yeah that's self-defense basically yeah. so it's it's survival anyway. isn't it yeah you know yeah. if yeah. you know just do you can do it as an exercise train it in your class yeah. see see uh-huh. what you think of that but ultimately like you said if you if you're not skilled in knife defense mm-hmm. what can you do well jesus everyone can do that you know yeah so you know have a play with it it's in, it's an interesting dynamic guys not saying it's you know the be all and end all but just try it no nothing's dynamic. to be all and end no. all you know we can't no one can say that you can survive yeah you know 100 no, no, percent it's no. just the it's your only option yeah you know it's like standing on the side of a cliff and you're going okay what can i do the guy's coming at me with a knife well you're gonna have to jump <laughs> if there's water at the bottom you got a chance of survival yeah. if there ain't what are you gonna do yeah you yeah. know it's about survival so you have to decide on whether you're going to make that what decision you, when we look at the syllabus knife defense let's just uh-huh. let's let's go into the talking a bit about the syllabus and why it is and mm-hmm. you mentioned it's it's different attacks with different weapons, whether it's you know short uh, stabbing blades or hacking yeah. blades. Why it's diff- different different examples? Yes, yeah. different examples of it. The um, what are the biggest um, mistakes? Are you eating again, Jones? No, no, I swear to God, I swear to God. You you keep <laughs> eating in this. <laughs> Because you, you're not closing your mouth when you're... I can hear you it's chomping away. It's because I'm talking, away. I'm talking. Well, I can't talk and not... You, All right, you can't talk and eat. <laughs> I'm a heathen, you know. Yeah. I'm a caveman, what can I say? I'm only saying that because I'm starving. Sorry, it's, yeah. it's not. I, it's because you you've got your headphones on and you can hear it. I can hear it. Yeah, that, that's right, I can. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Sorry. Going back to... I, I, the knife defense but can yeah. i just butt in there yeah go before, for it. because i did say there was another dynamic as well before oh, we talk sorry. about the syllabus sorry and, yeah. Uh, yeah no there's no problem i just thought you know there is a situation if you are a a, a person with the means to fight and you are accosted by someone who may well be armed and the the point i want to make is is an attitude it's about attitude it's about you know fightability if you want i like to call it whether that's a word and that just simply means that if someone is confronting you and you can't see their hands that's when they should be dead that's when you should be hitting them not waiting for them to pull out the knife not waiting for them to produce anything just if you if he puts his hand in his pocket if he's got his hand in his pocket anyway you're going to punch him straight in the eye or the throat you are going to or you're going to kick him straight in the nuts because you are not going to stand for that guy trying to pull out a weapon yeah. you know and if you can visualize any any weaponry around you at the time you do that then you go straight for that weaponry whether it be a, a brick whether it be a, a big stick or a chair or, or water yeah. or hot coffee you know anything it's a beautiful weapon hot coffee that's the best it's, oh, yeah. did i tell you about the time when i was in mcdonald's and there was there was a chab outside kicking off yeah, I was gonna. Go oh, I tell you what, it wasn't hot coffee, but but because I had a can of first, I had a thing of Pepsi at the time, no Coke. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it. I just finished my McDonald's meal and I still had uh, you know half a cup left. I thought, oh for, yeah. for Christ's sake, gotta go out now. This little chav's gonna be kicking off because he's kicking off with everybody. So I, yeah. I took the lid off the top of me, uh, me me Coke because I thought, I tell you what, yeah. it'll be a laugh if I just launch this in his grid. <laughs> <laughs> if, he, if he tries anything anyway sure enough walked past him everything was fine <laughs> but but 
you know, you're just prepping. Yeah. You're just prepping. Yeah. I've got a kind that's, of paranoia when it comes yeah. to. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, you were in the army, me. James. But, yeah, that's but that didn't make me paranoid. I think probably no. hanging around with you too much made me paranoid. Yeah. But you know, it's just about every adv little advantage you can have, whether it's launching a bloody you know yeah. Pepsi yeah. in their you, face. Uh, that's that's a uh, that's a you, you 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 hit it well right on the head when you said prepping. It yeah. is about prepping. It is about carrying. You know, I mean, if you've got an old coat that you walk the dog in, keep some sand in it, keep some salt in it, keep some rock salt in it, keep some what, bloody gravel pepper, in it. Bloody black pepper, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever you, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> whatever you you have, always carry a torch, but, a, but invest in a bloody bright torch. You know, people often look at the army, you know, army films yeah. and they see and they the first this is the first thing you think, isn't it? Before until you understand that they, 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 you know, the SAS, they, they get into the room and they got their bloody big bright torches on the end of their guns. Yeah. And you're thinking, well, they're a sitting target because, you know, the guy's going to aim at the torch. <laughs> but of course, if he looks at the torch, he's blind yeah, because yeah. those torches are so powerful that you know you look there you're blind you can't see anything oh, and as yeah. soon and then you then you become confused and the next thing you know you're dead so you know you've got to invest in a damn good torch i got a lovely torch i got a torch that's got like a indentation like a like um little sharp points all the way Ooh, around the, like the, the thing so you can use it as a hammer and twist it like a tin opener Ooh, yeah. it's brilliant you can open up this flesh with it Ooh, it's brilliant fantastic. and it's just a, a nice torch it's not too bright though i want to get a brighter hey, one i tell you what have you seen those knuckle dusters you can get right and they're kind of uh, fabricated at home and they kind of they're, they're skirting the uh the, the the gray area of the law in the uk so i was just going to say we're talking illegality now aren't we? well it's kind of skirting it because you can buy them on ebay but basically they're like really <laughs> big um uh nuts you know like nuts and bolts but they're th big big so you can fit your fingers through them right but they're all, all right. sort of pivoted one on top of the other so as you fold them out you can stick your four fingers through it and it's in yeah. effect a, a knuckle duster. I'm like, how cool <laughs> is that? That's that appeals to my sort of sensibilities. That <laughs> well, well, we have to we have to point out at this point <laughs> in, in, in time that we're not advocating people carry illegal weapons. Oh no, no. Al also, I have to say that the law in England is different to the law here because you can have mace here, you can have bear spray here, oh, yeah. and you need it because yeah. you can walk down the woods here, yeah. where I live, and you can you know be accosted by a bear so uh, you know or a cougar or or a, well, a, a, a you know a lynx that's, you that's, know with, that sounds you know. different to a south london uh, estate <laughs> yeah <laughs> some of you, the animals you, around there you uh, can be, be bitten by a snake yeah. you you can have all sorts in the summer but but honestly as far as you know england's concerned uk is concerned in general um you cannot carry anything for defense because it can be used as self as as offence, okay. so that's why you can't have mace. That's why you can't carry pepper. You can you, if you have a pepper pot in your pocket and you get stopped or scissors, they will want to know why you're carrying them. Well, yeah, that's they, why you can't carry a knife. Whereas here, you can carry a gun on your shoulder as long as it's not loaded. Mm -hmm. You can carry a sword as long as people can see it. You can carry a knife as long as people can do, see it. Do you know what? So, do you know what I do? Do you know what I do? Because yeah. I've got a dog. You know those yeah. huge sort of uh, dried bones you can get? Yeah. From Carry the, one uh, of them. No, I have one of them in the side of my door in my car. Like that a way, club. If, yeah. <laughs> hey, if anyone Caveman. questions anything, it's, hey, it's for the dog. And uh, my dog is, you know, sort of medium size. No way could she. <laughs> but you can just, I tell you what, you pick that bone up, club. Ah, oh, I tell you, that's going to hurt somebody. But you know, anyway. Yeah. But that's that's the you accumulation. Watch. That's the accumulation yeah. of my kung fu training. You see? And it's also it's also the opening of two thousand and one Space Odyssey. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying that I uh, look like a primate? <laughs> you know, I might act like it, but I'm certainly not. But uh, no, it's yeah. funny. It's funny. It's uh, it's hilarious. You know. But, yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah, but, prepping but, is important. Yeah, prepping. Going back to that, prepping yeah. is important always go out prepped always yeah. go out yeah. with the with the you know i mean i'm not trying to make people paranoid or anything but you go out knowing that it can happen mm. then you'll be prepared it's like going out and not taking a coat knowing it's going to rain you know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. it's not a good idea yeah. so 
No, that's uh, you know. The, so, the, but isn't it interesting? Now we want to talk about we're talking about knife defense, but you would think it's a purely physic physical thing. But we, no. we, we're talking about the psychology, about you yeah. know uh, condi weather conditions. You know, most people will freeze. Yeah, when they come in front, a knife is shown at them, and the reason people show knives at you is because they're trying to threaten you. Mm. It's not necessarily they're going to use that knife; they only want your money. Mm. So give them the money, yeah. give them your cards, give them whatever, because that's why they're showing you the knife. But you know, it's it's down to your own abilities and your own choices you make your own choices you know you can just say okay there you go i i can i can see you need a few quid there's there's the money right that's it but it's only if they get violent and obviously when you're talking about you know women and so on then you're talking about you know obviously other and it can happen to men as well of course yeah. we well, can't be prejudiced to, uh, here it happened to mick dundee yeah that's well, not rape. right this is a knife. Oh, <laughs> right. I was talking about rape, James. No, no, I don't, oh, right, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. <laughs> that kind of makes me sound a bit of a twat because I didn't realise you. <laughs> I was talking about Crocodile Dundee. I, yeah. And you were talking about that. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm well, talking about, you know, okay. it can happen to women yeah, yeah. and it can happen to men too, yeah. so we're not prejudiced. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, you've got to be wary. And then, of course, you've got to take into consideration numbers as well. Yeah. You, you've got to, you know, you've got to be, you know, you've got to be serious here. You can't oh, yeah. be, you know, you've got to be logical. You've got to be, you know, sensible. So what so, can we, when we're training the syllabus, how can we improve our understanding of the knife defense? I mean, I think we've maybe touched on that in terms of the psychology yeah. of it. But how can we improve uh, what we're doing when we're training it in the class? Be a instead good attacker. Of, right. Instead of just going through the motions. Yeah. Yeah, be a good attacker. Uh, a lot of people sort of attack and then stop, waiting for them to defend. No, stab. Yeah. Just stab at them. And it's a rubber knife, for God's sake. You're not going to hurt yeah. them. Stab them. If you stab them once, stab them again. But, because they deserve it. Yeah. Right? It. And, and they've got to... You learn to move. Yeah. It's yeah. the move of the feet. It's the footwork at the beginning of any move. Get the footwork correct because the footwork takes you out the line of the attack. Now, remember, we're talking about very basic straight attacks, yes. which are very rare, yeah. long straight attacks that are extremely rare in real life. Yeah. It's far more likely they'll be a lot closer, which is why you don't let people get that close. It's far more likely the knife will be hidden, which is why you need to see their hands. Yeah. It's far more likely that the person is, you know, He's going to be angry, aggressive, whatever, yeah. because he's already hyped up. He's already so, scared. So talking about going back to, to, to the syllabus, if you like, I just want to hover around the syllabus for a bit. I was talking about the yeah, syllabus. I, yeah, I know, but we, we, there's a scope there for to be sidetracked. You know, okay. I've got, I've got, oh, oh. no, when no, you no. See, footwork, no, footwork, 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 footwork. When we get out the when, line. So you're talking about having a good attacker, right? So yeah. let's, let's, because during some of the knife defense scenarios, um, you're not just doing one attacking stab or slash if you yeah. like or whatever yeah. there's multiple right so when you're yeah. doing multiple when if I'm looking at someone and they'll say uh, you know step forward and stab and then they'll freeze and wait for the mm -hmm. person to do something right yeah that's yeah. giving you a very false sense of it as an attacker you should be stabbing and then you know trying to bring your mm. arm back or something just make it that bit difficult you know yeah. do, do you understand what i mean obviously you've got to learn yeah. the move first but try no and... yeah we, we've got to make sure that beginners don't think they've got to yes. you know, try and yeah. like become bloody yeah. no like scream no i'm and slashing I'm, slashing yeah no no <laughs> i'm just i'm just talking about those people who've done the knife defense and, and want yeah. to sort of elevate the training a bit more yeah. so to speak you know because you've got to you've got the confines of the syllabus so you know it's like it's like a chess game isn't it you can do anything you want on the chessboard except yeah. go off the chessboard you know so you've got to stay within the confines of what you're doing or the scenario yeah. but listen uh, you know up it up the ante up the yeah, so, uh, intensity etc so what we did with our training um is so you get everybody obviously a certain grade but the, when they learn the knife defense they learn the knife defense through and through thoroughly attacking one person whatever then what you do is you get a load of people in a circle one person in the middle and a knife okay mm. one person's got the knife he knows for the first part he knows who's got the knife 
the knife man does the attack yeah. the defender defends the knife goes flying off whoever can pick up that knife becomes the attacker right and he just goes for it yeah. And they keep in the, in order. They keep the numbers in order. One, two, three, four, five, six. Keep it in order mm. initially, and then they'll be able to help the defender to learn the process. But after that, once you get a little bit more skillful, you get the beginner, the the the, the experienced person in the middle. Anybody around the edges, uh, they attack. Knife goes flying across the room somewhere. The next person picks it up, just attacks with anything they can think of. Yeah within the confines of the syllabus yeah and then after that forget the syllabus right and that is a great way to learn and it's an exciting and fun way of learning knife defense right okay and it certainly makes you wary of the knife now if you could do that with a real one <laughs> <laughs> that'd be great but i think there'd be a lot of litigation and a lot of bandage required <laughs> yes i would think so I would so, think so unfortunately it's a dangerous game but try to make it as realistic as possible even yeah. with the the rubber knife takes the psychology away unfortunately oh, because you, yeah. you feel safe yeah. um i think it, it wouldn't hurt to occasionally take out a real knife and see how people respond don't do the attack of course just see how people would respond yeah. you know see see what happens to their faces yeah when you when the instructor suddenly just goes right knife defense and in he drops the the rubber knife and he says, okay, you're ready now, pulls out a real knife and they all go, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that is where you realize how strongly psychology changes. Yeah. I'll give you an example of psychology. Cool. You've, got, you've, got a per, you've got the classes running around in a circle uh, and then around that circle, uh, there's two guys holding a quan, you know, a stick. Yeah. And they hold it at waist level quite low you know or even just above the knee you know it'll lower their arms down straight yeah. and everyone runs around they jump over the stick jump over the stick jump over the stick right then you change that and you get them holding a sword yeah see what happens yeah see what happens yeah everybody suddenly stops running and starts thinking about whether they should jump in or not yeah. even though it's the same height yeah that is that's psychology yeah right right yeah so Absolutely. you know um yeah that's great talking about so, <laughs> yeah sorry i didn't mean to sort of segue but go on no i was just gonna say i'm sorry it sounds like our classes are crazy <laughs> no no <laughs> oh no yeah. we want people to learn and we want people to do we want people to be able to do yeah. don't just go to your class and go through the motions yeah enjoy it yeah, make it, make it a club it's yes. not a class it's a club oh you need you need that family sort of uh, bind i yeah. think with martial arts you know you need mm -hmm. that sort of that anyway um talking about the knife defense as well interestingly enough it's probably in fact it's the first part in the syllabus if you like where we start doing some uh, a bit of china a bit of uh, locks and holds and all the rest of it isn't it yeah as if if people haven't tried the sets and done those things yeah. which they should have done so they should be encouraged to do that prior yeah. but yes in as far as the syllabus is concerned it's really probably the only the the start of chin na and yeah yeah locks and so, that sort of thing and it's a it's a it's a wonderfully expansive um thing china i i love it mm -hmm. when um when we you know yeah. i don't think it's not it's not done enough in the class really um mm -hmm. I, you know but uh, you know certainly knife defense yeah. isn't done enough in the class yeah, you know yeah, you, it, you need yeah. like a, a you know one at least one night every yeah. you, of course you can't do this unless you've got more than one night a week yeah. but you should have at least a night every other week where you just do nothing but knife defense yeah. and even that's not enough really you need to do it seven days a week yeah but that's not possible so you know do what, what you can um uh, again syllabus and we can i want to be very general and in as in, in as much as i'm going to basically say to you and i don't want you to sort of labor the point but in knife defense number one what's the most common mistake keep it simple what's the most common mistake that you see people do footwork okay um knife defense number two what do you think and you can you can say the same thing obviously but it this one's an interesting one because kicking too high kicking too high yes right okay 
And do you, People on. say, oh, you should kick, you know, you shouldn't be lazy kicking low, but there's no such thing as lazy when you've been attacked by a knife. Yeah, yeah. Kick, yeah. kick on the inside of the knee if you can. Buckle the leg if you can. Is, is it, Get is, him to the ground and run. Yeah. Is, the, is it in the syllabus that you kick to the head in that one? Is it yeah. in the syllabus that you kick yeah. to the head? Right, okay. Yeah, well the, well, the reason being is as the guy swings the knife up and then swings it down, well, invariably He's an attacker... He's Yeah, invariably an attacker stops at that point and waits for you to do the defence. He stops the hand halfway through. Well, he, sh he shouldn't do that. He should be swinging the knife up, trying to cut through you. And remember, it's a rubber knife, so try and make a big black mark on their tunic and just slice that knife right up their tunic they'll move out the way and then try and stab it down the side of their neck and just really try to reach for it and if you really reach for it that arm will swing right behind you and as you swing that arm behind you that's when your head goes down and yeah. that's why it's a kick to the head because your head supposed to go down so, right but uh, invariably people don't do that so no. just kick to the knee so this is probably the the kick to the head in Laogar syllabus, whether it's kick defense number four um, or, or this knife defense number two, people mm. misinterpret it, don't they? Because they think, oh, yeah. we've got a kick to the head. No, yeah. take no. the head it's to your to foot. To the foot, yes. Not the foot Bring the to head the head. to the foot. Anyway, listen, we can, right, knife defense number three, the overhand stab, most common. Yeah, most common is people don't, slice the knife up through the middle first they try to bring it around the top in other words they def they're not defending themselves with the knife because you're learning martial arts so you should be bringing it up through the center to stab down so you're trying to stab on top of the head you're trying to poke them through the head yeah. you know really yeah. and uh, so as you bring it up and the biggest mistake is of course you should attack the defender should counter as the knife is still on its way up yes should move in yeah. So then when the knife comes down, the arm is real close to it. Yeah. And uh, and you're trying to block with your wrist, not with the under part of your wrist. You're blocking with your bent wrist, you know, your your the top of your wrist where it bends. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Not underneath where all the veins are. Because if you try to block that strike and you lift your arm upside down to try to block it and the knife slides down, it will cut every vein and yeah. sinew you in your arm in your hand yeah. uh, your wrist and of course you'll bleed all over the place so you need you know you're going to bleed a lot less if it catches the top of your arm yeah okay it, it, the, and of yeah. course then you you can grab as well from there yeah no brilliant um just another point on number three is this one of those knife defenses where we're using a uh, cleaver so to speak it would be in traditionally it would have been a cleaver okay okay right number four knife defense yeah, Common mistake. Um, I don't know. Okay. Describe describe that one. I'm that's, thinking of number. I'm going go, straight. I'm going straight into number. You're passing it, aren't you? You're, you're passing it. You're grabbing. You're picking it up and, and passing you, it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah that's the one. I was. I was. I'm already set because of the other two, five and six. I'm already set to explain them. Oh, okay. And so and that went out of my mind. Sorry. So yes, you you're grabbing it from the ground because you're already on the ground. So you're just picking it up, and passing it to your other hand, and quickly stab them okay. it's footwork again people yeah. don't move their foot in time they try to avoid without moving the footwork it's going to be very difficult yeah. and of course you're slapping and they then they have their hand their right hand out yeah. so instead of slapping and keeping their right hand inside that slap and so they can then grab naturally yeah. stop uh, stop they, rustling old man you're rustling you're I'm, doing it again oh, aren't you? i'm i'm you're doing Tourette's. the technique you've got Tourette's. I'm doing the technique and I'm catching me mic as yeah, I do it. Yeah, so yeah, you, so yeah, your left hand is slapping, mm. your right hand slides up and grabs naturally, like grabbing a branch, grabbing the hand. The other hand then can go out and hit with the wrist or the back of the hand. Yep. And then you are, remember to twist the hand as you roll, yep. throw it up and stepping through it, it is quite a complicated one it that, is, but it, it does work yeah it does there's there's a couple of points that you can sort of do to uh increase the effectiveness of the uh, the the arm lock at the end but there's one yeah. point i just want to ask you about um gripping the, the gripping the elbow no well you can grip the oh. elbow yeah that's but that's yeah. what they do with the thumb they grab yeah, they just go to, to help bend it to yeah, help bend yeah. it that's I, not I, I don't I agree no? no okay go it on. does hurt though, uh, if you grip yeah 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 if you grip it and then you can bend the arm right yeah uh, and that's fine 
Mm. That's that's what the syllabus says. So, but remember, we're talking about scenarios here, yeah. and and we're talking about a vehicle for learning. We're not necessarily talking about oh, do it exactly like this because it will work like this. Uh, yes, it will, but there are lots of ways you can play with this. Remember. Yeah. So yes, as you raise that hand, there are loads, of, and this one is really interesting because I like number four because once okay let's, <laughs> you could, let's you couldn't remember it two minutes ago <laughs> i know no no i was i was set to talk uh, <laughs> sorry I, I did, i'd lost where we were and i'd i'd set myself talking about number five yeah go on okay yeah right we jest yeah, okay well. so how many times can you actually dislodge that knife from somebody that's how you got to count it it's really good so they stab out you slap the hand the arm can be dislodged the hand the knife can be dislodged by slapping the arm yeah. okay next as you grab it throw it up in the air i mean really throw it and twist it with your hand as you throw it up in yes. the air as you go through yes. the hand and you could dislodge it then yeah and that's why i say don't grab hold of it because yes it's correct to grab hold of it but if you throw it right up in the air and then run through and you can lose the knife there but then when you pull it back down you can stab him with the knife yeah, if it's still in its hand yeah, it but if not just throw the arm really hard backwards not in training of course because you'll dislocate his shoulder okay <laughs> that's that's my disclaimer and yeah. i'm sticking to it so obviously you would raise the arm it's already twisted you pull it down throw it at him so it stabs him so mm. he will naturally try to avoid it if he doesn't avoid it he gets stabbed it's no problem it's in his hand it's his fault okay bring it round up behind him and you could still lose a knife there so count how many times the knife falls out of his hand oh. by doing it carefully yeah you know and yeah. it's it's a really good good measure oh. that is of and oh sorry yeah, there's cool. one more bit there yep. because you have got your you do obviously put your hand on the elbow at some point whether you do it at the first part or at the end mm. don't the, the biggest mistake people make is they try to adjust their right hand to to try to bend the wrist right it's not about the wrist it's about the shoulder right you're dislocating the shoulder and you're it's, using the lower forearm the whole forearm from yeah. the elbow downwards as a lever yeah don't pull it towards you and stab yourself with his bloody knife yeah, what, what that what you're talking about it's hard to explain is, is what we call a yeah. universal joint so if you yeah. um it's exactly yeah. the same principle as on knife block number three when that arm has got 90 degree bend at the elbow and it's 90 yeah. degree from the shoulder when yeah. you twist when you talk that arm back on number three knife defense it's yeah. because it's a universal joint you will eventually get to a point where you're popping the shoulder the out yeah. and it's the same at the back as well if you pull yeah. that arm back you can pop yeah. it out um just so, sorry go on i was just going to say there's a trick as far as that when that arm is behind his back yeah and that oh, is yeah. you know keep yourself by the side of his arm the arm that you've got control of mm. push him away but just hold on to his arm. So you're creating and, uh, a gap between your arm and the back of the person. If their his arm, arm and the back yes, of the person. Yes. Yeah. If the, and, the if the attacker's arm is touching their back at this point, yeah. you think about how easy it is for you to spin out and yeah. release from it. But if yeah. your arm is there's a considerable gap of six inches yeah. or so, it's very very uncomfortable. Yeah. Plus the fact, of course, you hold on to the arm so it automatically dislocate, dislocates because yeah. it's overextending but whatever you do you know because what people do is they hold it and then pull it towards them and stab themselves with that knife yes, and what yeah. i'm suggesting is push keep them. your arms keep your right arm straight yeah so when you push them from one side keep your arm straight to keep the knife away from you yeah. their arm will still dislocate yeah. if you're pushing them away from you um, so it yeah. you know it's it's good can can i just ask for all those eagle-eyed second set practitioners here in the uh second set we've got that bounce with the wrist um yeah. can you interpret the strike in number number four knife defense as that wrist bounce we're using it as a strike to the side of the face so to speak uh yeah it can be the wrist it can be the wrist and Do you know you, what I you, mean? Yeah. yeah 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 it is it's a good position to to explain that wrist technique actually because you are literally hitting with the wrist you never hit with the top of the hand you oh, never oh, hit with oh, the fingers hang on. You sorry funny, sorry right? now i'll put my hand across <laughs> again i'm doing the techniques uh, Jeez. by the end of this podcast i'm sweating james thank god jack is not uh, next to you uh, lying on the bed you'd be black and blue yeah you just you just i uh, just talking to you on the phone wasn't i and she uh 
she just happened to walk in the kitchen as we were talking and you were talking about um some technique or something so i just pulled her to me which is very <laughs> i have to say that's very rare and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and i grabbed hold of her arm and demonstrated with her arm and she just sort of looked at me and then started throwing loads of punches at me as you could see coming out the side of the camera <sighs> that's my girl <sighs> yeah so uh, anyway um, um right. going back to that yes it's don't use your hand don't use your thing. You can use your, the back of your hand if you want to hit someone in the face, mm. but you can use your wrist uh, because you're, you're actually creating energy with that wrist. So it's, it's better. Of course, you can use like a back fist type of technique using the open hands. Yeah. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Just open hands, smack straight away. You can even turn your hand to the side and use the edge of the hand mm. like a chop if you want to. And you can aim for the throat too. There's all sorts of ways you can, you know, create a reaction yes, okay yes. what you don't want is you do, okay if you can get the person to collapse dead by hitting him and while at that point in the technique then fine but you're not going to be able to finish the technique <laughs> so just from that yeah. point of view wrist is great technique yeah. to use and yes in answer to your question that's a great example of how you could use that in the second set right we will move on to uh, knife defense number five um most common mistake uh, common mistake again is footwork people don't move off to the left fast enough okay. and then it's a bong sao yeah. and of course the bong sao is, encompasses the uh, the uh, the right hand yeah. right and if you think okay exaggerating this but if you think in Bok Pa Jern, when you first move and you do the finger strikes and then you move the two blocks high and low yeah. back yeah. there's the movement yeah. in that so you're basically bong sao in with the one your other hand is ready to grab it's not blocking but it's ready to grab the hand that you've just bong sao yeah. and as it grabs it it can rotate it and your the other hand again coming out with that wrist or back of the hand mm -hmm. same thing mm -hmm. and then rotate the arm now it's really important people try to combat this by like fighting back or keeping their arms stiff yeah. and people people find this very hard to do right because the arm is kind of upside down yeah. and they can they can almost arm wrestle with you right yeah. and and you're trying desperately to try and pull them now if you resist because you're worried about getting your elbow hurt because sometimes people are a bit rough and you should tell them to be slow right yeah um they, so they hold their elbow slightly bent and try to stop you from forming a lock on it yeah. because they're worried about hurting their elbow mm -hmm. right so what you're going to do is rather than try to push down on it you create a rotation so what you're doing is creating a circle so you pull their arm around towards you and then rotating down in an anti-clockwise direction yeah. and as you do that they can't counter it they can't hold it because it's going in a direction that they cannot perceive in time to to you know use muscles and and in that sense there's no muscles to use there yeah. it's very difficult for that rotation then it will go into a lock and you will be able to do the lock without them um, um resisting it's it's a it's a multi uh fasted lock that and and i'll, I'll tell yeah. you what i mean by that um it's you've obviously you've got when you think about the position you're in now at the end of you know the end of the, the the scenario so to speak you've got your arm wrapped under either either their their elbow or you could move up to the tricep there but what i mean by it's multifaceted you've got the rotation of the wrist so if you twist that wrist towards you there's there's a, you're putting a lot of strain on that wrist as well as raising up with your forearm on that person's arm increasing the potency of that uh, elbow lock if you like uh, whilst pushing down as well with that front hand so your opposite forces but then you've got um if if it's a very and this works well with 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 tall people um you can also push up the the arm if you like as one solid um body if you like into their sh towards their shoulder and what you're actually doing there is pushing up on their shoulder in, in, again increasing um a lock so it becomes yeah. a shoulder lock if you like yeah you can do that but then that changes the technique so although that's a brilliant technique it's, it's and it's really it's useful finish, if you like yeah but yes it does it, change the technique but yeah it's a useful technique to pla practice mm. uh, for knife defense and always you know play with the knife defense don't just yeah. do the syllabus yeah. but but um you can if it's a tall person the way to get 
him is to put your left leg behind his leg yeah. and press on his knee. He's, he will start to fall and it will increase the weight Absolutely. on his arm yeah. to yeah. increase his yeah. elbow bend. It's, it, um, but the, yeah. Sorry, I was, I was no. just going to say, yeah. I want to give people an experiment to do yeah. if, they want, if they don't believe that these kind of things work and just simply hold the person's arm out as if he's just holding the knife at you. Mm. Get your little finger and put it on his palm or on his, shall we say, his thumb, mm. if you like, and because you've twisted his arm upside down, so his hand is upside down at this time. Yeah. So put your little finger on his thumb and then put your, the side, the, your forefinger of your left hand just above his elbow and then make a rotation with your finger, your forefinger on his palm, on his thumb, right? And make that rotation and tell me if it hurts. No, don't tell me, tell him. You know, they'll tell you if it hurts because it bloody will hurt. And all it is, you can even use your little finger. Yeah, as I said, mm -hmm. little finger on his, just on his hand where he's holding the knife. Yeah. Upside down. Rotate that little finger round and they'll get pain in their elbow because you're, you're compressing the joint together. I tell you what, though. It's um, it's one of those things talking about on the podcast. I have a feeling if if you're really unsure as to what we're talking about, and they're going to ask it, request a video, request and I'll get video, you. It, I'll send. And we'll. I'll, and I'll do, do a little video on my phone, mm. and I'll demonstrate it, and I'll just send it to you in messenger. Yeah, yeah. If that, if you need uh, to know that experiment, absolutely, guys. You know, as always, all of them. Yeah, request a vid. Um, mm. I think we'll press on now to number six. Go for mm -hmm. it. So this one's this one's an interesting one. <laughs> yeah, well, it's three attacks, isn't it? Yeah. So you're just trying to fool the person, yeah. slash, slash, stab, you know, and he's moving. And and I, th there's only one point I'm going to make about this one because this it. is a really good uh, point for conjecture, right? And basically, you've done the two slashes, changing the hands, change your hand again, stab, and as you stab, he moves out, covers, punches you to the body, okay? open hopefully you've got to have a little bit of theatrical license here so he's punching you to the lower ribs and then he's going to do a kick and a rolling punch yeah? Mm, yeah now it's really important okay that you punched him if you do the rolling punch first and then the kick right you have more power on the rolling punch and you have more power on the kick but experiment and find out as you do the rolling punch mm -hmm. lift the kick up so that's that's you when you're changing them around right so the the way i do it is the the, the punch first yeah then the rolling punch of course and then the kick and this is how i set it up um because experiment do it in different ways and you'll find that as you raise your rolling fist, you raise your knee. As you strike your fist down, then, and only then, kick down. So mm -hmm. as, the, as the fist is coming down, the knee is basically coming up, and then straight away, you're pushing it down. And it's really hard to explain that, uh, isn't it? On I, it's, bloody it's, pretty, it's pretty, uh, pretty yeah, good explanation. Mm -hmm. I, I understand. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try it in, in simple fashion so people Go can on. do it with the podcast. Yeah. Right, I've done the punch. Yeah. Raise the, the arm to do the rolling punch. Yeah? yeah, and as it's coming down to hit him, bring up your knee. So just clarify for everybody where that rolling punch is hitting as a target. Side of his head. Okay, so the rolling punch side of his head, as it's coming down, the knee's coming up. Okay, yep. now when you do the kick at the back of the leg, you are um, just kicking, and as you kick, you're pushing your arm away. In other words, you're twisting away to do a really good side kick. You're twisting your body, mm. so as you raise your arm, okay away from the technique he's going down anyway mm. you raise your arm away from the technique you're basically twisting your body in a uh, to the left and stamping down with your right leg yeah, yeah. so you're increasing the power of that so not only are you increasing the the power of the rolling punch coming down by lifting mm. the leg yeah. you are now increasing the power of the leg by lifting the elbow up it can be it's severely coming. exaggerated because his back yeah. is to you and he's not going yeah. to see it anyway so yeah um, yeah 
Uh, yeah. that, and then, uh, of course, you're back, you're back, your reverse turning kick comes around to the other yeah, everyone, temple. Yeah, everyone doesn't like that, the reverse turning kick to the temple, but uh, hmm. it's kind of a bit of an elaborate... <laughs> It but, is kind of an elaborate it, finish I mean? off, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's why people sort of look at Kung Fu and go, oh, that don't work and whatever. Because to do something like that, you really need to make it work. But do you need it? If you, it's it's the same old, same old thing, isn't it? If you're confronted by an individual and you punch them once and they go down, that's all you need. If you have to fight them, hit them more than once, that creates a problem yeah you know so ideally every single self-defense technique should be one single move yeah. you know yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. it but of course that's not always going to be the case so you've got to know how to follow yeah. it up yeah but I in an ideal world you know he attacks you bang you yeah. counter and hurt him yeah. and that that's that's it but yeah. you know depends on how much you train yeah, absolutely. Um, right, I think I think we've pretty listen. There's, as with anything, with such an expansive uh, subject matter as kung fu, you can talk about it forever. But uh, hey, yeah. we we we've got to we've got to uh, make a uh, make a swift exit, guys. All right. So um, I hope that I hope that clears up some some uh, some you know points I, on I, life defense. I per think it's good. Personally, I think it's going to open up a bloody load of questions. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully it's gonna it's know. gonna open up a, a web of, of yeah. you know questions they're gonna yeah. be going I don't do it that way what about this way what about if it's yeah. a this knife or that knife what if I got a sword yeah <laughs> you know oh, it's gonna it it's gonna come out with all yeah. sorts now guys so bring it on, I don't bring do it, it this on. way yeah we, we want but the, it, uh, yeah. the, the, uh, the 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 correspondence we really do we want that yeah um, and and uh, you know we, we'd like maybe some of those videos that I do I may well stick on the um, Laogar Kung yeah. Fu podcast yeah. because they I might see. help other people too. And I think I think maybe... that's the way forward. I think we, uh, you know, why not? Yeah. Um, guys, as it, as ever, if you could do us a huge favor and you haven't liked us on Facebook or subscribed and follow us on YouTube and whatnot, just please, just please do us this this small little courtesy and go and send us a like we would really appreciate that this is so important you know as you can appreciate guys trying to build up a you know a fan base or a profile is is, is quite hard um you know we're, we're here to try to do our best to, to help you and answer your questions at least give you a different point of view on uh, on things and m maybe help you to think and start you know improving yourselves because that's what it's about you improve us by asking us questions and we hopefully you know can can open up uh, open up the chasm in you um guys thank you so much this would not happen if it wasn't for your uh, your support and uh you know we appreciate all your questions and all the rest of it guys keep 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 training hard you know stay safe during this uh, this period of time and uh, we really appreciate you listening to us and uh, taking the time out of your day um all that remains for me to say is goodbye take care mm -hmm. steve sign okay, off yeah Goodbye, have a nice day. <laughs> See you guys, take care. Bye-bye now. Assume I kick your little Beijing ass right now, man. I ain't scared of you. I know you know that little tricky shit. Come on. Hi guys, thanks so much for joining us on the Kung Fu Podcast. If you like that and you want to find out more about us, you can head over to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or YouTube and find us under SJN Martial Arts. And also guys, this podcast is available on Podbean and iTunes. So until next time, take care of yourselves and we'll see you again on the Kung Fu Podcast. Why doesn't somebody pull off 45 and bang, settle it? No, no guns.